What's EMP? Well, an electromagnetic pulse is basically a super energetic radio wave. It's got so much power that it can destroy electronics across a huge area. In, 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 in fact, across the entire world in the case of a, a superstorm, a solar superstorm, the EMP can be made by nature, by the sun, by a solar superstorm, or it can be made by man by a nuclear weapon, and it can be made by uh, non-nuclear weapons as well. In the case of a sun, what we're concerned about is the once in a century, once every 150 years solar superstorm. We have geomagnetic storms that happen every year that affect countries at high northern latitudes. Uh, but once every century, 150 years ago, as NASA's estimate, uh, a superstorm will happen that will create an EMP that is so powerful that it can destroy electronics across the entire world and put billions of lives at risk. What happens if my power would be out for 24, 48, 72 hours, or maybe 37 days? The National Guard and other agencies in Wisconsin will test its preparedness and communication in five northeast Wisconsin counties over three days in Midway. The exercise called Dark Sky will simulate a long-term mass power outage. Ensure that responders are prepared for long-term power outages. That includes responders from federal, state, and local levels, encompassing private utility groups, the FBI, and fire departments. The what-ifs is what we're trying to do is fill in those spots for the what-ifs. No homes will lose power, but simulations will take place. In Outagamie County, those scenarios will involve mass casualty to hazardous waste to natural gas. We've got our private providers out there, we've got our partnerships out there that we're all testing and ensuring that we can communicate. We're ensuring that how do we support each other in a time of need. It will be all hands on deck here in Amro with the police, fire department and the Red Cross taking part in the exercise Dark Sky. Electromagnetic pulse. Yes. Is that what electricity does as it moves? What does that mean exactly? Well, uh, think of it this way. I think everybody has had a, uh, the experience of driving down a highway with your radio on, and then you pass under a high power line, and you lose the radio. Then you come up back out on the other side. That's basically all an EMP is. It's an electromagnetic field, all right? except it's much more powerful than the field that you experience on the highway. Now imagine there's so much energy in that field that when you go through it, all the electronics in your car are destroyed. Now imagine that field is not just localized to a small spot on the highway, but it covers all of North America and it would destroy electronics across that entire area. That's what could be accomplished if you had a single nuclear weapon and detonated it above the atmosphere, say at 300 kilometers or so, up in outer space. Mm -hmm. Mind you, this is a different kind of nuclear attack than the one people are used to thinking about. It wouldn't uh, destroy a city, there'd be no fallout, there'd be no blast effects. If you were standing on the ground directly beneath the explosion and it was detonating overhead at 300 kilometers, or it could be as low as 30 kilometers, it's in the vacuum of space so that you wouldn't even hear the explosion. There'd be no blast effects that would reach the ground. There'd be no radioactive fallout. And when you start to think of electricity, everything we do is associated with electricity, isn't it? Even if you try and fill up your car, the gas station, the pump, electricity. Everything we do is related to electricity, no? Absolutely. All the critical infrastructures depend upon it. Communications, transportation, banking, and finance. Um, we did an experiment on the, on the commission, and I, I just I, I went to a grocery store and picked up an apple. And I wondered, how did this apple get to this grocery store in the Washington, D.C. area, you know, the simple apple? And tr tracing the history of that apple, it turns out it was, uh, it was grown in an orchard in Washington. It was harvested mechanically. It was cleaned and packaged mechanically using electronic systems and electronic assembly belts. It was put on a refrigerated truck and then drove, drove across the country so that people locally in Washington, D.C. could eat the apple. So even the simple apple depends upon hundreds of electronic systems in order to deliver it to us. And we wouldn't have the apple or any other food. In fact, there's uh, only a 30-day food supply in the country to feed 320 million people. And water would stop immediately. You know, when you turn on the tap, it requires millions of volts in order to deliver that water through your tap. And the commission couldn't figure out how, how would we keep uh, 320 million people alive with no food, no, no water, possibly for years. 
We estimate that uh, if we had a blackout in this country that lasted one year, that's entirely possible in these scenarios that we're talking about. We could lose up to 90% of our population to starvation, disease, and societal collapses. Wouldn't be able to function. Hospitals wouldn't be able wouldn't to get function. to hospitals. That's right. If the lights weren't out, it's more than just the lights. Explain what could actually happen to people if there's a massive cyber attack. Well, in a place like Manhattan, for example, if the power goes out, you know how the fire department and the police spend the first couple of days getting people out of stalled elevators? Mm -hmm. You're talking about a community of, what, 8 million people? The food in a place like Manhattan would run out in a couple of days. New York State has several million MREs, meals ready to eat. But when you take several million and you divide it by eight million, you're talking about maybe a two or three day food supply. Mm. What happens on day four? Yeah. Right? But What I'm talking about is a cyber attack against infrastructure, a cyber attack that could affect tens of millions of people for a period of months, if not longer. Based on your reporting, it seems clear from your book that the national security officials believe that this is a matter of when and not if. Exactly. In fact, that's a line that... Um, a uh, man I came to know when I was embedded with, with the U.S. forces during the invasion of Iraq. He is now the commander of CENTCOM, four-star general uh, Lloyd Austin, who said exactly that. It's not a question of if, it's only a question of when. If someone exploded a high-altitude nuclear weapon over the United States, the electromagnetic pulse would affect all the electronics within line of sight of that person. Were the blast to occur high enough, the entire continental United States would be left with no electric power or the things that depend on electric power. Medical services wouldn't be available because they need electric power. Telephones wouldn't work. The traffic lights would stop working. Big traffic jam. Transportation would be shut down. Electronic funds transfer wouldn't work, so you wouldn't get your paycheck. You wouldn't be able to use your credit card. Food stocks would run out very quickly. Everything we know about life today that makes it convenient and efficient would be shut down. The day after an EMP attack, the configuration of the country would be more like that around 1800. The problem is that the country had a very small population at that time compared to the 300 million people who live here today. There would be a real challenge to keeping our population even alive, much less strong and viable after a high altitude EMP event. Mark, uh, six, four, Mike. Left turn on seven, 